Uh, this is Level With Me. Uh, this is my show where I uh, play games and talk about what I think is going on with the level design there. And uh, right now we are maybe 70% of the way through uh, Half-Life 2. Uh, we are in a weird chapter called Chapter 9A um, called Entanglement. And uh, we are in a section of the game where... Um, we just area. I'm not calling about that. What's she up to? You we just got through a fight and now we have to witness oh this drama soap opera unfolding in front of us. Too tempting a prize to simply turn loose, especially in the absence of Gordon Freeman. You would have had Freeman if you'd been patient and just waited for my signal. We weren't oh my god. Sure you were ever going to get around to that. Human loyalty is being what they are. Dr. Bur as I have stated before, you have to let Eli come around on his own. I have yes. known Dr. Vance far longer than you, my dear. I'm afraid your feelings for him may have blinded you. Feelings? This has nothing to do with feelings. It's a simple truth that when they didn't Eli do much facial animation for her in this scene. I mean, I guess it's kind of a low resolution, like, monitor, so... Damn her! I don't believe this! Come on, Gordon. Now we've really got to hurry. Go on ahead. I'll disrupt the next level of security and catch up with you when I can. Oh, how convenient. Um, yeah, so we just got through this uh, big battle scene where I had to, like, set up these turrets here and, like, kill all these soldiers coming up. Um, Go on, Gordon. And uh, these are different from the other turrets we've been fighting for, like, the past hour or two in the previous weeks. Go on, Gordon. Um, these turrets are friendly to us, and they will kill the other enemies. So it's kind of a nice reversal of previous chapters. Um, oh wait, hold on, let me check something. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, we're in this room. I actually really like this room. You know, they've reused this room, like, several times by now, but... It feels kind of nice here, because here you get this nice, um, you know, like, these combine additions and, like, augments on top of the existing architecture. Um, you know, it feels, um, it's like a nice contrast, because it's darker metal with this very, like, not reflective, kind of, like, cream color, like, plaster wall we've been seeing for a lot of the chapter. Um, oh, that's weird. Looks like they like, yeah, like that's not supposed to be metal up there. That looks really weird. That looks like a big bug or like texturing oversight. But I guess no one ever looked up at the ceiling to notice that. Huh, strange. Yeah, that looks really bad. Um, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah, I like the, like the combination of colors here. Um, and you have this like big red stripe that's kind of like offsetting and accenting everything. Uh, accentuating everything like through the entire room and scene um, yeah it looks good also like the contrast here they, where they have where this is like a really tall cavernous like atrium kind of chamber thing and then here we're going into this more like narrow clearance kind of small hallway thing now oh this is the wrong way Uh, I think I go this way. Yeah. Also, we finally know what these pods are for. Um, you know, we've been seeing some of these pods throughout the game, but it's never really clear what they are. But um, if you saw last week, we learned that these pods are prisoner pods. And this is where they keep and, like, commodify humans to, like, convert them into soldiers or something. Um, here, I, actually, this is kind of interesting to me. Here, obviously, is just a copy and pasted kind of door here, or the cell door here. Um, and it looks like the level designer just put this combine metal thing just over the door. Um, in one sense, this is kind of like a little bit like sloppy or something. Like, you might not want to do that. Um, but on the other hand, it is maybe good because maybe it helps reinforce the idea that um for like the evil combine faction 
Um, they don't really like care about human architecture and what the previous function of this place was. Um, what they care about is like grafting their own functionality onto it. So um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of split about this. Um, on one hand, it's kind of cool and helps this feel more alien. But um, on the other hand, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, and there's like doors above here because here you can see right here. Um, there used to be maybe a catwalk here because um, um, there will have been a catwalk for all these different cell doors. But here you can see they've been ripped out, I guess, right here. Um, that's what that trim line is about. Um, okay, let's uh, keep going this way, I guess. Here the glass looks like a weird light mapping error. This glass is using the wrong cube map. It's like really shiny, right? It's like way too shiny, um, more than it should be. They should maybe put like another reflection probe right here so that it's a little bit darker. I don't know. But the glass looks okay on this side, but it just looks really bad from this side. Anyway, uh, let's keep going this way. Um, oh, some wreckage here. Pretty fun. I guess I'll just unblock this. I like this table. This is a good table. Oh, I just destroyed it. Oops. Uh, okay, let's go here. Where am I going now? Um, oh, that's weird. That's like a weird visibility bug. It shouldn't be like flashing in and out like that. Wait, no, is that are we actually seeing into the hallway on the other side? Yeah, that's kind of weird, right? They should maybe put like a skybox wall right here or something. Kind of sloppy. But, oh well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, this is actually something that people have been talking about on Twitter. Um, where, like, notice how, like, pitch dark this section of the hallway is? Um, there's, like, a sense that uh, Half-Life 2 uh, actually originally didn't have HDR support. Uh, they patched that in after they added HDR to the Source engine in uh, with uh, Half-Life 2 Episode 1. So they kind of backported a lot of the old Half-Life 2 maps. And when they did that, I think they didn't really have time to tune the lighting. So you end up getting these like kind of weird situations where it's like kind of not like the lighting just isn't really reaching the room. And you get a sense that it's kind of like sloppy in a way that a level designer probably originally didn't intend and probably wouldn't do today. Uh, if you look at Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which was lit with HDR from the beginning, you don't get these really pitch dark um, corners of the room. They actually like do a better job with lighting for the HDR uh, setting better. Um, but it's kind of an interesting case where like we can never really play the original Half-Life 2 now. Um, we're kind of stuck with this new version of Half-Life 2 that's just going to have all these weird, awkward, dark corners with bright pipes everywhere. And I imagine if you're a Valve designer or developer, you have better things to do than to relight like a 20-year-old game or something, so um, it's probably not going to get fixed ever, so oh well. Um, oh, people in the chat are asking, can't you just turn HDR off? And uh, technically can, but I think the game breaks. I mean, I can try doing that now in the interest of like uh, historical like preservation or something. But I think it might break. Let's see. Did that break anything? I think I'd have to reload the map maybe. Well, we'll see. Oh, there's some weird errors right there. The sparks are rendering through the uh, wall. 
That's really weird. I feel like there's like a lot of new bugs in Half-Life 2 that I've never really noticed before in this playthrough. Um, maybe that speaks to kind of the HDR bugginess we've been talking about too. Well, the sparks seem to be signifying it's bad if I touch these metal parts because they will electrocute me. Uh, and if you remember from the Ravenholm chapter where there was an electric fence, uh, it's kind of the same kind of signaling and feedback here. So I feel like I'm not supposed to crawl on that electrified ladder. Maybe I'm supposed to jump off here under this very convenient pipe here. Oh, and then they just spawn a head crab there? That's weird. Where'd that head crab come from? Well, anyway, I have to jump over here, I guess. What happened to that head? Oh, it grabbed a bone and it was eating it. That's why it was retracted. Uh, let's keep going here. Notice like the subtle color contrast here with the lighting. Um, if I was like over here and I'm like, oh, where do I go or something? Um, notice they kind of light all, again, all the entrance and all the uh, entrances and exits here, right? They have a big floodlight here to signal that's where we're supposed to go. And they also put yellow light here and then put a yellow light. Oh God, what's happening? I thought I was no clipped. The barnacle pulled me while I was no clipped. Ouch. Um, oh god. Okay, well, this is what I was talking about. This is what happens when you turn HDR off now in Half-Life 2, I guess. Uh, a lot of the maps don't seem to have uh, non-HDR light maps baked. Uh, so here we can see the map is now what we call Fulbright. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, developer Fulbright, that's kind of what they're punning on. Um, and Fulbright is kind of like the default, like, rendering state of, like, a video game. Lighting is actually kind of more like the process of adding more shadows on top of something. Uh, it's technically easier to just render everything at 100% full brightness. Um, and here you can see, um, without lighting, the world gets very flattened. Uh, it's kind of just impossible to kind of see where we're supposed to go or what's happening. It really flattens the image and composition. It's not clear where we're supposed to go because all, now all the walls are here the same kind of value. Um, so I think I'm going to turn HDR back on because I think lighting is kind of important here. Um, but this just goes to show you that um, Valve has basically kind of like broken their game and probably doesn't intend to fix it because it's not really worth it and who cares who plays these old video games anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that back on. Can I do this? No, that doesn't reload light maps. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna go and reload the game. Oh my god, wait, it's still... Oof. Okay. I think it saved my setting from before. Oh, wait, what? Oh, crap. I don't know the lighting command to turn. Uh... Matt HDR level two. Oh man, why isn't it reloading the map? Mm. Okay, you might have to go back here. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, you totally. Oh my god, Half Life 2 is just totally broken for me now. Um, I tried reverting back to a previous save. Um, hmm. I used to know how to refresh all this. 
Um, I totally forgot all these obscure console commands, though. Um, what if we go to back here? Oh my god. Okay, what if we quit Half-Life 2 and restart Half-Life 2? How about that? Uh, let's try that. Um, it's okay. This is why you should never listen to people in your chat, because they will just totally ruin your stream for you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It's, it's fine. Um, it's not your fault. It's, it's my fault for listening to you. Um, but it's okay. We'll just reload Half-Life 2, and hopefully these light maps will return to us. Um... Oh my god, okay, thank you. Okay, here we are back in this gorgeously lit room before everything got destroyed. Uh, let's get back to where I was. Yeah, I don't know where this head crab comes from. God, it's so random. Save here, follow these bit little breadcrumbs along the way. Um, and then there's also like a little bit of like storytelling here. I mean, not storytelling. This is a really boring story, right? The console malfunctioned and now it's electrified the water, right? That's not really a great story. That's not exactly the Citizen Kane of games, but um, you know, it's these little like moments and rationales that help make a world feel more like consistent and stuff. So I think it's good. Um, oh wait, let me adjust something. Okay, there we go. Um, and now we kind of come back to this gameplay we've been encountering in previous chapters where uh, the floor is hot lava and we have to arrange stuff so that we don't end up touching the floor because then we'll die. And in this case, uh, there's like an extra puzzle here where I actually can't really jump up. If I just went into the water, I would not be able to jump up uh, through there. So up to that like ledge, you see. So now I feel like, okay, well I got here, but now I have to go grab some more garbage right here. Oh, and here's all these barrels, conveniently floating barrels, by the way from uh, previous, oh god, from previous uh, chapters here. Oh god. Is this enough? I'm gonna assume this is enough. And I have to like improvise, I guess, like a little bridge or something here. To like roll on these, walk on these weird little barrels. Um, and here you can see like some good level design here with the physics of the whole thing. Like here, um, I had to pick up all these barrels from over there and drop them over here. Uh, to make it easier, they made this whole section lower than the ledge from where I was walking on. So then you get kind of like a bowl where I can easily drop all this stuff. To like help you even more, they also added this fence here, right? So that if I grabbed this barrel and shot it, it bounces off that fence and then I can still get it. So I'm still not like totally out of luck. Also, if I picked up this barrel and shot it over here, it bounces off and then actually rolls down these stairs back towards me. So here's like a kind of, I think, pretty good like subtle way of making sure the player uh, doesn't get so stuck. Um, oh, and there's like secret ammo over here. Oh, that was getting electrocuted. Ow. Uh, okay, let's try to make this jump here. Then I'll pick up this barrel, drop in front of me. And I made it! Yay!
Oh my god, and there's zombies here. What's the guy doing? Uh, okay. Oh, there's someone behind me. Oh my god. Let's just uh, go ahead and heal up. Uh, let's grab these supplies. Um, yeah, maybe there's a way to turn off the electricity. I don't know. And I think I'm already done with this room, so I think I'm just gonna move on. But maybe there's a way to turn off the electricity. I don't know. Go up here. I like the transition here. We're like grungy concrete down here. And then as we climb these stairs and go back up, um, the walls kind of transition back into plaster. And then this is also kind of like some subtle like wayfinding where um, we know we're kind of back at floor level within the prison complex proper and not still in the basement level. And they tell that story, that very fascinating story, um, just by... Uh, you know, using some textures. Uh, was there something I missed back here? I don't know what's up here. Oh, nothing. Although, can I jump this? Oh yeah, there's some extra supplies up here. Nice. Kind of random though. You'd think they would put like a door up here. I don't think the prison architects would have like just put this random stairwell up here that leads nowhere. That's kind of weird. Oh god. I can hear them. I love their movement sounds. Like, it sounds like they have, like, all this equipment and stuff. And then it kind of draws attention to them as well. Like, some good sound design, I think. Uh, are we good? I think we're good. What's in here? Oh, I think this is going to be a spawn closet that opens up later. Uh, what's in here? Oh, nothing. Uh, I think we have to jump down into there. In which case, it's like a one-way trip. Ooh, ammo. Uh, oh yeah, now I think now it's like a section um, that a lot of people also like in Half-Life 2. Um, I'm seeing soldiers in all directions. It's like another like turret battle section where we have to set up these friendly turrets um, and fight. Basically, um, I don't know where to put these turrets though. Maybe I'll put one here and then I'll put one Like here, I guess. I don't really know. I Like how they give you uh, three turrets, but Really they're gonna be coming like from four or five different uh, directions, so um, Oh my god I have to like kind of defend the Alamo here. Oh, he just knocked it over. No. This turret was my friend.
Oh my god. Oh no, one of my former students is in the chat now. Oh god. How embarrassing. Oh god. What happened over here? I love the sound the turrets make too when they like fall over. It's like it's like a weird like robot crying or something. It's good, I think. Am I doing okay? I think I'm doing okay. So I'm playing on easy right now. Um, usually this section's actually like surprisingly difficult if you play on normal or hard. I think it spawns like a lot more enemies. Um, and then it's like surprisingly just like, yeah, really challenging actually to survive. I think most people end up dying like multiple times on this set piece. But then you still feel like kind of like it's fair, I guess. Oh my god. Um, you still feel like it's fair. You always feel like even though you died, you could have like set up your turrets better. You know, and maybe if you just were smarter with where you put the turrets, oh my god. Then maybe you could have survived more, I don't know. A lot of dudes this way, I'm gonna put my turret over here now. They all just hole up here. Oh my god, you monsters! No, not my turret babies! Oh my god. I might just die anyway, Jesus. Oh my god, I have to start it from the beginning? Okay, let's just try to be a little bit smarter about this. Gonna put some of these boxes over here. I wonder how it knows when to start spawning enemies though, like... Does it- maybe they scripted it so that when it knows I've touched all three turrets, then it starts spawning enemies? I kind of wonder what's going on there. Now I feel kind of bad for what I'm doing here. Um, I'm basically kind of exploiting uh, Half-Life 2's pathfinding here. Uh, half of 2's pathfinding isn't really super good at navigating around dynamic obstacles. Um, I mean, they, there is like a level design hack you can kind of do. You can tell enemies to ignore things and just like push through stuff. Um, but you know, that's not necessarily the best thing too, and you don't always necessarily have that on, so... Um, I'm just gonna kind of frustrate the enemy a little bit. Actually, I should put it maybe more like here. Like, the enemy doesn't understand these crates as cover or anything. They just understand it as, like, some obstacle that prevents them from pathing towards a certain place, so... You know, these are some advanced pro strats that I'm doing right here. I wish it was easier to turn this. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's try to survive a little bit longer at this time. Oh my god.
think I'm doing better this time. I mean, one sneaky thing they could be doing is detecting how many times you reload the game and then making it easier if you've had to reload the game like five or ten times. But maybe that's not what they're doing. That's a little bit too fiddly for them to do, maybe. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh my god, what was that? Okay, I guess that's why you don't hole up in here, because they'll just throw grenades at you. Is that not dead yet? Jesus. Oh my god. Oh god. Sorry, I want to do more level design commentary, but like, I have to like, focus so much on this. Jesus. Huh? Oh. Okay, she finally got here. Gee, thanks. Sorry to take so long, Gordon. Looks like you could have used some help. I won't leave you again, though. Now let's track down- Oh, she won't leave me again! I think that's like, some good emotional insight on Valve's part, right? Um, like right after this kind of tough set piece, the first thing she does is apologize to you, and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I accept your apology, thank you, wow. Um, uh, let's talk about the level design here first, though. Um, so before Alex was just standing there and waiting for all the fighting to die down, um, let's look at the level design here a little bit. Um, I like how they kind of reuse... They basically reuse the hallway that we encountered earlier at the beginning of this stream. Uh, copied and pasted it, but still it feels different, right? Just because they organized everything differently. Um, I wonder if Alex is wondering how I'm able to like fly around. No, I mean, she's not saying anything, so... Um, but I like all this, like, level over level, like, balcony, catwalk, like, action here. Um, again, that's usually what we think of in terms of, like, good level design here. Um, you want to, like... You know, this isn't, like, Doom 1 or something. This isn't Wolfenstein, right? Uh, or Wolf Wolfenstein 3D. You want to, like, have some, like height differences and level over level action to like emphasize how this is like a 3d world that's like complicated and stuff um and i like how they leave some of these cell doors open too i mean i was kind of a coward and didn't really duck into these places but you could imagine that if i was <clears throat> like a much cooler person or something i would have been like running around and running and gunning and all that stuff Oh, can I take my friends with me? Maybe.
I mean, in this game, Alex is supposed to be your girlfriend, but really, I think I'm, like, gay for this turret or something. So I think I'm going to keep this turret around with me. I'm going to marry this turret. Oh, this is a weird hallway. It's, like, really dark. And then they still kept using the plaster texture. Um, recall when we were climbing through these uh, stairwells, usually as we descend, it would turn into like more of a grungy gray concrete wall texture. But here they kept the plaster texture. And also the plaster texture, just if you keep it plain like this, it doesn't really tile that well vertically, I feel like. Um, I would have converted this bottom level into like a concrete wall more like instead of keeping up with this plaster motif. Oh, this is broken down or something. Okay. Oh, and then there's the level transition. Oh my god! The first thing, literally the first thing that guy did was knock it over. One asshole. Knocked over my husband. Oh my god. Rude. Oh, I like these flares. Like, it's kind of nice. Um, you know, Half-Life 2 rarely does dynamic lighting like this, so it's always a little bit of a treat when they do decide to do it. Supplies in here. Come on. Any supplies in here? Very bare kind of room. A little bit disappointing, I guess. Just like stacks of these random crates and tables. Or maybe I can be in like a polyamorous kind of thing where it's like me and Alex and this turret. I don't know. Hmm. Got you now. Wait, what did she do? Oh. Uh oh. We're missing the plot, on, sorry. Woman. We don't want to keep her waiting. Oh right. <clears throat> uh Michelle Forbes um betrayed us. So, we locked her inside a room. Yeah, you tell him, yeah. No turning back now. There she is. Leave it talking to me. We may need her to get out of here. I'll have this turret. Talk with her too. Hello? Oh, thank God, someone. Alex? Gordon, how did, you, how did you get in here? We know all about you and Brain. What? You've been a spy. And she ignored my turret. Oh my time. God. What are you Rude. About? Damn it. Move back, Mossman. We're coming in. I like this room. Like, I, it has cool shapes to it. Um, if you want really good combine architecture, uh, you should play. Uh, Adam Foster's Minerva Metastasis, you know, he like elevates combine architecture and shapes to like another out like art form. Um, it's my work too. 
Me and the turret are outraged at whatever this is happening, at whatever is happening. I don't know. No, and I love this texture. I've talked about how I love this texture. Like, I love the ridges here. No thanks to you. Just enter the coordinates for Dr. Kleiner's lab and let's get moving. But we need access to the teleport platform and we're locked out. I'll take care of that. Let's get going. Did they break through the door? No, not yet. Where am I supposed to go? Oh my god! Oh no, more! I'm sorry. I don't know who these other turrets are. Don't... Don't feel betrayed. I'm sorry. Until now. I did have a fairly good idea of what to expect. I'll bet you did. It looks like it's waiting for us. The Combine use a peculiar pulse forming network. Okay, I'm gonna go free the rest of my husbands over here. Oh wait, no, I can't free them. Oh my god. Sorry we took so long. I hope that wasn't too bad for you. Don't worry about me, sweetheart. Judith! <laughs> well, this is kind of awkward. Exactly. Or kinky? I don't know. Like, they shouldn't just, like. Shouldn't they, like, release him now? Kind of weird. This is the combine It's smaller than I imagined. Uh. You know, you know, don't free him. You know, just keep him confined. That's okay. You know, that that's fine. Don't free your father. You don't need to free him. We're in Nova Prospect. Just keep him locked up in this weird cage. Oh, where's that voice coming? Shouldn't there be like a screen of Dr. Kleiner? That's weird. Hold on, gotta bring this back down. Oh no! While we weren't looking. Stop! What are you doing? I'm sorry, Alex. It's the only No! Get back with your dad! What? Oh, what? What the heck is going on? What? Oh, like the lighting was bugging out. Oh god, what? That's weird. I like how I didn't notice she snuck onto the platform either. Like, that's kind of clever to have this console go over here. Um, oh, if you see any error messages in this stream, um, it's because I turned developer mode on. So during the game, you probably wouldn't see any uh, error messages like that, really. Oh god, what's happening? I like the particle system here, because it helps it feel like more like they, you know, blew everything up, but it's also good because it kind of draws your attention to that, too. What's that sound? I hear like a buzzing sound. Oh, that's that thing. Oh, and, th and then this is kind of cool. Here they actually, like, built the progress bar into the world, you know? They could have had a screen or a timer or something, but... Here you can actually see the progress as it happens, like it's like recharging this machine. Um, and that's kind of cool, that's like intuitive. Oh, oops. I like how they lit up there, too. And they, like, have some nice vertical fog happening, too. 
Like, it's cool how it's kind of hazy up there. Uh, what's happening here? I feel like they made this fight kind of easy. I mean, the timer is already supposed to maybe make it feel urgent. So maybe they don't need to make it feel more difficult. You know, but that's like a number one game design tip. If you ever want the player to like feel panicked or something, just add a timer. And that instantly adds like a lot more urgency. Uh, even though the timer might not really matter. Or it might be slow or fast or whatever. I'm- I'm inside already! Oh no, we left the turrets behind! Oh my god! I'm so sorry! Oh my god! All my husbands! I'm so sorry! Oh jeez! I'm a monster! I'm the real monster! Oh my god! And now we're back here, back in the city. Uh, this is back in chapter two. Uh, we went through this area and went on that teleporter. Gordon? My God, how did you get here? And when? What's wrong? My dear, I, I had given up hope of ever seeing you again. I was afraid we might not make it either. I think the teleport exploded just as we were porting out. Indeed it did. And the repercussions were felt far and wide, but that was over a week ago. What do you mean? Over Gordon a and week I were ago? Just there a minute ago. Fascinating. We seem to have developed Ooh, a very plot twist. This suggests an entirely new line of investigation. A week? Then what have we missed? A great deal, my dear. The blow you struck at Nova Prospect was taken as a signal to begin the uprising. But what about my father? Well, that is most troubling. According to the Vortigaunts, he is a prisoner at the Citadel. We've got to get my father out. Barney has been leading a push with that very aim in mind. Barney? And another of your friends arrived several days oh, I love ago. these lockers, too. Dog, you made it. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Robot thing. So there, you see? It's not all hopeless. Oh, God. Oh, and the little cactus is in the locker. Okay, I want to take the cactus with me. Doc, come in. Are you there? This cactus is my new husband. Doc, are you there? Yes, Barney. And it's kind of phallic, kind of penisy too. Alex and Gordon have just arrived. Well, man, that's good news. I almost gave you guys up for lost. We're planning to set up a staging area for attacking the Citadel. Gordon and Doc can head your way. I want to get Dr. Kleiner. What's in here? Oh, nothing. Oh, that that rug. Oh man, I wish I could take the rugs with me. Oh, oh well. Okay, Gordon, you heard him. I'll catch up with you as soon as I get Dr. Kleiner settled. Just a minute. I can't How convenient. Oh, no. How, where did she get to Literally her? ten minutes ago she said she wasn't gonna leave me, and now Go she on, is. Gordon. I'll take care of this. Ugh. Well, fine. Good riddance. Oh, let's charge up here. Um... Oh, what's up here? I've never actually climbed up this ladder. She's around here someplace. Just a little supplies. That's cool. There are plenty to go around. There's only one hitty. Oh. I kind of like how there's a little scene here if you, like, choose to stay and linger. Like, that's kind of a nice touch. Like, I feel like a lot of video games, especially AAA stuff, is always about, like, making sure you see all the content. Otherwise, the content is, like, wasted or something like that. Um... But it's kind of cool when you can like choose to kind of like take it easy or 
take it slow or something, and you can kind of like explore the story space a little bit more if you want. Why are you looking in here? She's not in this box. This is a bad place to look. She's obviously not here. Ugh, okay, fine. Uh, I'll just take my husband and leave. Yes, Gordon, please do go on. Lamar is extremely wary of your crowbar. Oh. That's cute. Wait, what? Oh, okay, and then just locked us out. Thanks, sorry. Oh, more ammo, that's nice. Uh, and then more. Oh, and then this was the little pet carrier the head crab went in. Oh, that's cute. Um, okay, I guess we head down here now. I can't pick up the pet carrier, otherwise I totally would put the cactus in there. Um, oh, and then now starts a new chapter called Anti-Citizen 1. Um, maybe now's a good time to stop for this week. Um, but uh, thanks for uh, watching. Um, thanks for hanging out. Um, I'm glad you got to watch me shoot a bunch of people and uh, marry a bunch of inanimate objects. Um, see you next week when we go through like a war-torn city and shoot a lot more people. Um, Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and uh, see you next week, I guess. Bye.